We have a knife. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ugly. It's, it's a, what it is, it's a, it's a 1975 moth. Hi, I'm Joey. And I'm Derek. And welcome to episode 8 of the Spoken Wheel Show. On a hot summer day. Very hot summer day. I know. So the first bit of news we have to bring you today is that GM has announced its plans to bring the Cadillac Celestique into production. It's going to be an electric car. I think it's going to be pretty cool. It looks pretty nice from its designs. It'll be hand-built at GM's Global Technical Center, which is uh, the first car to be made there, which I think is pretty cool. There, it will utilize advanced manufacturing technology and tools, whatever that is, <laughs> to, but we to hand-build. They want you to know it will be hand-built by, by these tools. Yes. Oh, I'm not exactly sure how the... Hand-built Cadillac will use advanced manufacturing <laughs> technology and tools, but maybe hands are advanced manufacturing technology yeah. and tools. It will have the highest volume of 3D printed parts at any GM vehicle, which is kind of interesting. It is expected to compete against luxury EVs such as the Porsche Taycan and Mercedes-Benz EQS. The expected price is supposed to be in the six-figure range, which means it ranges from about $100,000 or $999,000. So... We'll see when they uh, release that for us. Yeah, it's a very broad range, saying the six-figure range. Yeah. There's a lot of numbers in between there. So yeah. it could be a million-dollar sedan and be extremely <laughs> expensive. Or it could be just only 100000 which is also still expensive. Well, now it's time to take a dip in the pool of chat on the corner of Discussion Drive. Now, over the last 10 months, there has been 392 crashes from cars in the United States with level two driver assistance technology. In other words, it's basically cars that have all these automatic safety features to prevent you from crashing. Yet 392 in the past 10 months from those cars in particular is quite a lot when they're not supposed to crash. So of these 392 crashes, 272 are from Teslas. Can you believe that? 272, that's a lot. And the next in second place, proudly representing Japan is Honda and then followed by Subaru with 10. Now you might say, okay, well, these are just numbers. Well, if you take a look at this graph, you can see, look at Tesla. <laughs> I mean, that's horrendous. They basically take up practically the entire graph. I mean, it's, it's insane. It's insane that we still have them on the road. Now, this will all make sense as we show some example images. As you can see here with this driver in the Tesla, he is asleep behind the wheel, but this is not a one-off. This happens all the time. As you can see with this Honda CRV owner, this soccer mom clearly is probably not the best of drivers. They're always swerving in between lanes, going really fast and then going really slow. And then they have kids swimming about in the cars and they're just a road hat. I mean, anyone who buys a Honda CRV, you've practically given up on life at that point. And then of course, Subaru drivers. You know, what's interesting with Subaru is they have two distinct demographics. They have their 20 year old <laughs> kids who drive the Subaru WRXs who are really reckless because they go too fast and don't know how to drive a car. And then you have the 40-year-old midlife crisis person from Vermont who just is asleep behind the wheel and they're always a mess, going really, really slow in the fast lane. Now may I present an excerpt of wisdom from Life is a Highway by many authors. A small excerpt here from, of course, Jeremy Clarkson. In a little over 100 years, the motor car has killed more people than every single war that has ever been waged. Stacked up against the car's Adrotinus at wholesale slaughter. The psalm begins to look like a Sunday school hour. Haven't even caught on properly. Nearly 50,000 people a year are killed on the roads. In just one state. And 19 are injured. Out there, one in every 42 cars on the road at some stage will be involved in a serious accident. It's so bad that... I fear that within the next five years, the number of people being killed will rise sharply all over Europe and North America, and I blame the airbag. Are no fewer than 17 airbags. Quite apart from this unusual places like the steering wheel, they're located under the gas. Foolish enough to drive into the side of one of them Swedish tanks. Now you must remember that Volvo has already had its side impact protection. And therein lies the problem. 
Very soon, people are going to realize that they have huge crashes at any speed they choose and walk away. So in conclusion, if you see one of these safer cars on the road, just avoid them. They're going to crash into you. Moving on to cars that have just been released, we have the new Chevrolet Blazer EV SS. Just like every other new GM mid-sized electric car, it has batteries and it's electric. Unlike the standard Blazer, being an SS, this is expected to be a performance version. It has big wheels, seemingly four doors, we think. Unfortunately, we don't know much about this car because Chevrolet will not release any information until July 18th for some reason. Why July 18th? We have absolutely no idea. Now moving on to the bidding paddle. We have a 1967 C2 Chevrolet Corvette. Apart from being the exact same spec as Joe Biden's car, we don't think it is. Or maybe it is. Or maybe not. Moving on to the actual bidding paddle, we have a... <laughs> <laughs> it's so ugly. It's a, what it is, it's a, it's a 1975. Mo. I don't know. I, I, it's it's M-O-H-S, Safari Car with a K. It is the most hilarious thing. It's, oh my God. <laughs> this car will be for sale at the peak of auction if you want it. <laughs> from July 27th to July 30th in Harrisburg. Um, some of the unique features this car has. Well, yes, it is wrapped, if you didn't notice, in 40 yards of Nahide, not to mention the 7,000 staples that it has. 7,000 staples it has to attach 40 yards of Nahide to the car. Yeah, someone sat there and, and counted the staples to make sure. And it was, it was 7,000 exact. That's, Let's yes, just clarify I just that. wanted to clarify that to you. Um, it does have a very Mercedes-Benz-esque front end feel. It, it has the, you know, the grill shape, the, the little... It's not really the Mercedes propeller, you know, badge, but it's 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 got a, it's got a badge. <laughs> it's got a bit of. A, <laughs> is it a Rolls Royce? Is it a Bentley? Is it a Mercedes? I, I don't know. It's all of them together, and and it, it's got it's got the gold headlight grills, you know. Back when headlight grills were a thing. Were a thing. They were a thing. They sort of took the minivan door thing to the next level. So I guess soccer moms interested in 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 minivans. This might be your car. Um, uh, the doors, rather than sliding back like a minivan, yeah. they slide out. Yeah, they... they uh, but what's weird is the door hinge also comes out with it. So if you want to get in, mm -hmm. it's actually very narrow and hard to get in. <laughs> and if you, if you crash to the side of something, I don't mm -hmm. know how you're getting out because yeah. the door, it does that. Yeah. It doesn't slide. It's a bit strange. And, and the bumpers look like a countertop. In, in a hotel lobby, it, it's got it's got it's got the double bar thing going. They got the lights in the middle With of it. With eight million reflectors. Uh, we counted those too. And uh, <laughs> according to the information given from Mecum, there's there's only two of these prototypes known to exist. Thank God. Moving on to the interior, you have three seats. Um, why not one? Why not two? How about three? Uh, so you could say it's like a McLaren F1, except I don't think the driver sits in the middle, so mm -hmm. it's a bit like that one car Richard Hammond drove on the Grand Tour French car special. The steering wheel is very red. Red. It, it's very conventional. It's it looks like a steering wheel. It has there are three spokes. two two uh, radio walkie talkie the, the thingies things. The so moving on to upcoming cars, DeLorean is making a return. They are coming back to the future, in the future, with the Alpha Five. Yes. Which doesn't have a space in between the Alpha and 5. So as of now, this car clearly remains in the future because this car is still a concept, which means it's probably not going to be produced for a little while. Or ever. Yeah. Like the original DeLorean from the past and, of course, the, the part that made it famous in the movie Back to the Future, it has gullwing doors, which is pretty cool. May I add, the doors are very big. They are huge. Like you look huge. at the, you know, you look at the the BMW, the i8s. They have the, you know, they they they're like you can't get in because they're so small. This is half the car. This car, of course, will be an electric. So its aimed goal of range is about 300 miles, which is you know pretty good actually very good unlike the original car this one does not look like a silver cheese wedge as it is painted 
but the body lines are really smooth, which actually I think looks really nice. Yeah. Of course, being a concept, how much of this makes to the road version? Not sure, but compared to most concepts, it doesn't look very unrealistic. So maybe there's a chance. Yeah. I actually got to admit that the lines of the car are very nice. It's it's rounded. It's not, you know, boxy. We look at these newer electric cars these days. They look more boxier. This is very nice. The taillight design, you know, with the wraparound rear taillight and the little lights in the doors for the, you know, when you open your door. I think that's pretty cool. We expect to see this car sometime in the future while present at Monterey Car Week before it's over and in the past. And now it's time to feel the sweltering heat of that 450 degrees oven on this hot summer day on Roast My Ride. Today, we are roasting the Toyota Compact Cruiser EV. So according to Car and Driver, and I'm gonna quote them here on it, it is a miniature off-roader with boxy styling reminiscent of the Land Cruiser which recently departed our shores. Aw, so cute. Look I... at it, a baby Land Cruiser. Mini, mini Land Cruiser. I know, I know. Now, the front end of this car makes it look like a remote control car with all the plastic mesh look everywhere. I mean, it's just covered in plastic. Well, it might not even be plastic, but it looks like plastic, so that's even worse. Yeah. The grill is plastic. The bumper is plastic. Well, it looks like it. The headlights, plastic. It almost looks like a, a Lego thing that you put together when you were three years old and you know you got that little box and you opened it up and it was all blue and green and yellow. And... It does, especially like the headlights, like yeah. the little like, squares, I mean, yeah. uh, it just, it doesn't look real. That's mm -hmm. kind of my problem. The side of the car reminds me of the new Land Rover Defender with its fake ladder to nowhere. Because, you know, you gotta just climb on the roof every day when you go shopping. And the thing about this ladder is like, okay, maybe it's functional if you're like camping or something where, you know, you have a tent on the top. But every time I've seen a Land Rover Defender with the ladder on the road, no one uses it for that. And I guarantee this car, no one's gonna use it for that either. So like, why is there a ladder? And also, why does the ladder not go all the way to the ground? Also, the inside of the rear taillights. Yeah, plastic. So something else to mention from the side, the wheel arches, they go to the rear door and they've got these huge like wheel arch guards. Like some cars have the black plastic. This has, I don't know if it's paint or also mega black plastic that engulfs practically three fourths of the side of the car. Um, and the wheels are, they seem odd. I don't know if they're off-roading style kind of wheels. They just, they're, they're not matching the rest of the plastic car. And then what's weirder is the, the wheels on both sides of the car are different. So if you take a look on this first image here, this is the left side of the car. Mm -hmm. There are these white kind of like rallying wheels, which kind of look cool. I'll, I'll give them mm -hmm. credit. But then you go to the other side and they're, they're completely different. But here's my main point and concern with this car. If you're going off-roading, you're not gonna be saved in an electric car if it doesn't have the range. What are you gonna do? You can't go far in it, and so you can't go off-roading in it. It's for like the people who drive up a sand dune and then come back down and then go plug in their car again. You'd have to plug it into a rock, which, um, I don't know. So really this means this car is meant to be driven to the grocery store and to your office, which that isn't what it's made for, but that's only the things you can do with it. And then on top of that, it has two rear brake lights on the top. They could have just made it one connecting or maybe just have one that's small, but no, let's throw two on there. It looks like the handles they have on the beast for the Cadillac, you know, the thing, and they have the uh, secret service. Maybe it's maybe it's a secret service Toyota Land Cruiser. You never know, you never, never know. know. So if you are in the market for a toy car that is actually a real car, I think this is the perfect car for you. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel for more content to come. As always, I'm Joey. And I'm Derek, and thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time. Hopefully not as hot. <laughs> Bye.